Hey guys, this is Torno. Today we have a roster review for Mr. Adventurer who reached out to me via Discord. Uh, now keep in mind that these roster reviews, I only really do them for Patreons or people who donate um, via like uh, just a separate one-off donation um, because honestly I have so many that I need to go through still um, that it kind of falls a little bit behind if I start going through them. So uh, if you do want to get them, make sure you do sign up over on my Discord. Uh, there's a Patreon link and you can go over there and sign Sign up, if not, down in the description as well. So we're going to go through Mr. Adventurer's roster. He's given us a few notes here that we can work with to kind of go through it. Um, so first of all, the war defense, he's changed team one and two today. Um, his Sinister Six purposely summons Green Goblin, and he's got a war defense six that's an old one from Valley. He also wants to go through his save squads just to have a look at them, make sure that they're kind of working for blitz and stuff to make it a bit easier. He said he's not a hardcore blitzer, um, but still uh, making your blitz teams easier is uh helpful um he's got a few characters favorited here as well um venom is for the isos to check the change to coming for the doom raids that's coming night nurse for doom raids uh thor's a pet project because he got six red stars on him heroes for hire skilletary and shadow lands are being built for war offense and he likes the aim synergy so he's playing around with his aim characters as well down here um He's got, he's on the last node, second, the last node of his second round of DD4, so he's almost kind of getting all that done, and he's got five legendaries already done. He's got his alliance runs to Doom War two times a week for 30%. He hasn't built X-Factor much and don't know if they're best served as a war, full squad in war or not. And his current focus is Alliance War. So we're going to go through this and make sure that it's kind of working for him. So first of all, um, the Alliance War defense. You mentioned here that you've got, uh, you've got Green Goblin on there purposely. So that way he gets summoned for that, uh, for his passive for the uh, resistance and uh, the unresistible defense down. However, you're in security here. So realistically, you don't need to kind of worry about that. Um, you've already got the defense down there and you're better off with serve with someone else. Like, um, for example, what I'd be doing is replacing both Vulture and Shocker with Mysterio and with Swarm. Um, Swarm overall is an amazing character. I know that you've got him down here, but in Alliance Wars, he's just godly, especially alongside Dr. Octopus. Um, Mysterio also here serves as giving them the deflex on spawn so that way they don't need to worry about either getting boosted or if like they don't happen to get boosted in time um, they still have those deflex. He also applies the heal block and everything like that. Overall those two characters just really serve better here um, than these guys. Um, Honestly, I just wouldn't really worry about Shocker and Vulture anymore when you can definitely have like Swarm and Mysterio there running easier. Um, other than that, was there any other War Defense nodes? You said War Defense 6 is one that you got from... Yeah, that's a pretty decent defense there. Um, so I really like this Marauder squad here. That's a great Marauder squad. Over here, I would honestly be putting Coulson in this squad here, replacing uh, Miss Marvel here with Coulson. Coulson just makes that a godly team, um, especially because you're in such a high um, a high priority room. I know you've got Coulson over here, but you could replace Coulson here with Hawkeye. Uh, while obviously you're not going to have Black Widow and Hawkeye there, Hawkeye's still going to serve you really well there as being able to kind of slow people down uh, with the blinds and stuff. Now, I'm not sure how far in your Hawkeye is. Let me just see if I can quickly see him here. Uh, do, 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 do. I've probably scrolled past him. Um, all right, it's probably easier to look through here for him. Yeah, Hawkeye, 62k. That's not too bad. That should still be for serving fine here. Obviously, this team's going to be decently well, especially like having Kestrel on defense, especially when you're in the security, is a godly move. Really, really good move. Um, so uh, having like having Hawkeye here means you can move Colson over. And while it changes this defense into a little bit weaker, it changes this defense into like this godly, really strong one. Now, other than that, like I'm having a look here and uh, this is the next squad that you definitely need to be working on. This squad here, not with Namor, but with She-Hulk as a war defense squad is incredibly, incredibly powerful. That Fantastic Four plus She-Hulk. That's a, uh, The issue here is that that's obviously a lot of bio. You've got these ones and then that other suggestion that I gave you there, um, a lot of kind of bio characters, um, with including Swarm. 
Um, but honestly, like She Hulk plus in uh, She Hulk plus uh, Fantastic Four is just it, it's insane. And I would be replacing like your Red Skull team here, and then you could bring Red Skull onto offense. This team here is definitely good. Like I do like this team a lot here. Um, personally, I would probably be replacing Loki with like um, Minerva, and then putting Ghost on. Putting Ghost on this team, I really like Ghost with Marauders personally. Um, I find that it goes a lot better. Obviously, having um, it's kind of two different things. Like one is more offense based and more damaging based, uh, while also she protects herself and she can kind of dodge and stuff like that. While Miss Minerva's there, obviously for the res. Personally, I prefer the Ghost um, kind of offense uh, and uh, offense and defense defending herself there. Um, but overall, it's not like a it's it's not a deal breaker either way. Um, even if you put Ghost over here instead of um, Loki, it's still going to be insanely great value. Uh, I assume you're not really using Ghost on offense because Ghost on offense just isn't going to hold up much. Um, but she's she's a godly kind of uh, character. Um, to have there. Now, next up, you said about your Blitz. Uh, needs Say squads need work. Most of these squads are built for Blitz, even though I'm not a hardcore Blitzer. The placement of these characters do need to move moved around a bit. Need to add Kestrel to a squad for sure. Um, personally, like having a look here, let's go through them one by one. This team here, that looks fine. Like There's not much you can do here. Uh, obviously, you need to work on these characters, but overall, like I would suggest putting Thing on the end over here, um, making sure things on the end because he's going to be like your pseudo tank uh, with Invisible Woman using her ultimate there to protect him. Uh, obviously, this one here needs a bit of work there on these two if you want to be using it or anything. Uh, this is perfect. I really like this. This is the perfect setup. Um, I think the only difference I make is I switch Jubilee and Beast, um, but it doesn't really matter either way. Uh, this team here, yep. Fine. Um, you've got like, there's a lot of characters here that I'm noticing are really kind of underpowered. Um, da -da -da, just going through them kind of one by one, looking at uh, here, I'd be putting, um, I'd be swapping Blob and, uh, sorry, not Blob, swapping Toad and Magneto. So that way Magneto's over here, Toad's getting protected by Blob because um, Blob uh, gives, gives a deflex to the side of him and everything like that. These are all fine, all fine. Um, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Although, nah, no, that should be fine. That's perfect. Uh, yep, 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 that's fine. Um, Although putting Mantis between Drax and Groot is a good idea. So that way she's healing both of them. I can't tell like if they're in order here. Um, just because honestly, I I can't keep track of where characters are in order properly or not. Um, I'm, I'm just assuming they're left to right here. Um, this is fine. Perfectly fine. Um, this is... Yep, that's fine too. Um, once you kind of get Electra's passive, the tier four here, you could put potentially protect Night Nurse early on, just so that way you make sure that she doesn't get nuked off the bat. Um, otherwise, fine, 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 fine. Yep, yep. Like there's no issues with any of these. These are all all good. Uh, this Silver Surf one, I assume that's just Silver Surf. It carries them all. Um, and then these ones, so you're just Dark Dimension ones. Um, so let's have a look at actual characters that you're investing in here. Then, like, the, the, there's nothing really wrong with your Blitz teams. I can't see any that kind of stand out as um, needing work, except for maybe like putting your another X Factor character here instead of Mimbaku. Um, but let's have a look at your actual roster here. Um, so you said your primary focus is Alliance War. So definitely kind of working up your X Factor. X Factor is going to be really, really um, one of the best ideas you can do here. Uh, they're like the second strongest war offense squad, arguably, depe depending between um, Shadowland and X Factor on the matchup and stuff like that. Uh, they're incredibly powerful. Um, otherwise, like... Yeah, as I said, like working them up is going to be key and working up your characters for do more here. Um, let's just see if there's anything. I'd like to like look at the bottom of the roster to kind of see if there's anything there that needs to be worked up. Astonishing. Astonishing is definitely a team that's definitely good for war, uh, for war as well as 
obviously in to do more ca- uh, do more raids. Um, t- personally, like astonishing, I think is easy an option to take to gear fourteen. I would easily like suggest them to anyone to take to gear fourteen, and it's going to be helpful, especially for either your doom raid as well. Like getting those guys up a bit more. Obviously, you don't have the stars. Um, like you don't have super high stars on them. Four and four there. Um, all right, it's probably easy to just go back over here and find them. Yeah, you've got like five, five, four, three, four. That should be fine to kind of take them to gear 14, in my opinion. Um, they're definitely kind of going to be strong there. You already do have um, She-Hulk invested in a little bit here. So you could almost put them onto defense, like once you get a bit more invested into the others as well. Um, obviously, it's not going to kind of hold up against like your tier 14s and tier 12s and stuff that you've got at the moment. So um, it might be probably go better than this. Um, Red Skull team, thanks to Zemo. Zemo kind of hard counters the Red Skull team, so I don't really suggest it on war at all anymore. Uh, other than that, looking down at the bottom of your roster, there's nothing here that's kind of standing out really much. Getting ready for Infinity War. Uh, sorry, not Infinity War. Infinity Watch is going to be really helpful. Uh, you do have here, these two are got slowly getting there. Longshot, obviously, is almost kind of added into the War Store soon. Shatterstar, it looks like you've got almost finished there. Um, and Multiple Man and Polaris, I can't actually see here. So I assume that they're probably down below. I'll just see if you sent me a roster down that far. No, you didn't. Um, but I assume that um, those two are probably around like three stars or something like that. Just keeping an eye on those guys, even though um, you might not get Adam Warlock this time around, the Infinity Watch still looks like they're going to be worth investing in, even if it's just the others, including Nebula, um, including Nebula and Gamora that you've currently got, obviously. And then you've got... Um, You've got the other two new ones that are going to be coming out, Moon Dragon and File of L. Uh, so it's definitely worth investing in there. Um, other characters like Red Guardian is definitely worth investing in for war as well, for war offense, for skilletary. I'm currently running skilletary on war defense. They pick up a win or two every time. Um, so definitely, I think even like uh, like even like replacing skilletary into here is definitely a worthwhile investment there. Um, one thing I'm noticing as well is that you don't have Killmonger. Oh, there's Killmonger there. Um, Killmonger's there. Don't worry. I just kind of completely missed him. Um, the other thing is that with your aim, I don't like. I don't like suggesting people not work on things that they're enjoying. And I do think that if you're enjoying them, definitely work on them. But the fact that they're kind of tech and bio characters, it means that you're taking resources potentially away from characters that are going to serve you better. Uh, it's it's uh, it's kind of rough to suggest because I don't want to suggest you don't work on things you enjoy because it's a video game. You're meant to play it for enjoyment, uh, but making sure that kind of um, you keep in, keep in mind that it's kind of costing you in other areas at the moment. Um, as for your heroes for hire, they're looking good. Uh, getting some more stars onto Misty is going to be important, but Colleen's the one that you want to invest in pretty heavily. Your Iron Fist as well, like six red stars. That Iron Fist, once he gets uh, to tier 14, is going to be kind of just pumping out so many heals that it's going to be completely, completely ridiculous. Um, other than that, there's not really anything super high that you need to kind of be working on. Just like uh, definitely like that uh, She-Hulk Fantastic Four. That's my number one suggestion. She-Hulk Fantastic Four and your X Factor. Then have a look at if you're going to get Infinity Watch. If not, we'll have a look at Infinity Watch once they come out without um, Adam Warlock and see if they're kind of still worth investing in. Looking at Gamora and Nebula's kits alone, they look like they're going to be heavy, heavy, great characters. Um, one other suggestion here is your poor X-Men. <laughs> I mean, I know that I like X-Men a lot, but like both your X-Men squads are a little bit sad here at the moment. Um, definitely kind of bringing up your Astonishing squad in line. Uh, tier 14, tier 12 at least is going to be key for kind of using them on war because uh, even in war, they're kind of a really heavy hitting squad. Um, if someone's still running... Um, Someone's still running As- Asgard or Lo- uh, Hella at all on war defense. They're going to be able to help you out there a lot. Um, but that's it for today. Mr. Adventure, make sure you reach out to me if you have any more questions. Hopefully, I've gone through and answered them all. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of different stuff to kind of take in here. Uh, so if you need a written version or anything like that, let me know. Um, that's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.